In this video, you'll learn how to communicate like a management consultant. I'll delve into the concept of top-down communication, share examples, and introduce you to four key communication frameworks. Additionally, I'll discuss situations where this style of communication might fall short and recommend some insightful books for further exploration. I'm Viktor Ogolenko and you are tuned into FLESS. Ready to dive in? Let's go! Here's the essence of that distinct McKinsey communication style. When talking to executives, be concise and top-down. These folks aren't here for lengthy tales, not unless you are Hans Christian freaking Anderson. Look, Mark doesn't even have the bandwidth to switch up his daily outfits. How do most people converse? Usually we speak in chronological order, starting from afar to build the context. We explain what we've been busy with, what we're doing right now, what we think about what we're doing right now, what problems we're facing, why our previous ideas didn't work, how we feel about them and how we feel about that lazy bastard on our team, and so on. By the end of it all, we often lose sight of our initial message and its core intent. <laughs> How do consultants converse? Their approach is concise and top-down. It consists of two steps. Step 1. Lead with the central message, keeping it concise. And step 2. Back it up with two to four detailed points or evidence for clarity. Let's have a look at a few examples. This is my favorite. Voila! In view, a humble vaudevillian veteran, cast vicariously as both victim and villain by the vicissitudes of fate. This visage, no mere veneer of vanity, is a vestige of the vox populi, now vacant, vanished. However, this valorous visitation of a bygone vexation stands vivified and has vowed to vanquish these venal and virulent vermin vanguarding vice and vouchsafing the violently vicious and voracious violation of volition. The only verdict is vengeance, a vendetta held as a votive not in vain, for the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous. <laughs> Verily, this vicious soise of verbiage veers most verbose, so let me simply add that it's my very good honor to meet you and you may call me V. What's the issue with that long-winded monologue? While highly artistic, it's lengthy and leaves you scratching your head. That's channeling your inner Anderson. Now, if a McKinsey consultant were to convey the same point, it would look something like this. Call me V. Point one. I fight against bad guys. Point two. I will get justice one day and won't stop until I do. Point three. In the past, I've been through good and bad stuff, acted like a victim and a villain. It's top down and it's concise. The core message stands out, and while additional details are provided, there are optional reading. Here is another scenario. Imagine a country manager presenting a progress update. But instead of a structured report, it comes across as a jumbled train of thought, rather than polished executive communication. Now, check out the refined, top-down rendition. We are on track to meet our sales target of $4.5 million this month. First point, B2B sales are expected to reach $4 million. We've submitted a $1 million proposal to XYZ and expect to close the deal in 10 days. Second point, B2C sales are currently under $1 million, but we've hired a great CMO and will have the core marketing team in place by the end of the month. And visible progress will come next month. Notice anything. The content remains unchanged, but its layout is more systematic. It makes it far more digestible and clear. For our next illustration, here's a genuine comment pulled from LinkedIn. Quote, I have a question. My course will finish in September 2023, but the official confirmation that I have successfully passed the course will be issued by my university in late October. However, we can officially work full time after the course has finished, which is starting from the end of September. The question is, if I find a full time job, can I sign a full time contract and start working before I apply for a graduate route visa? Or if my current employer would like to change my contract from part time to full time, can I do that? In simpler words, 
words, are we allowed to start a full-time job on a student visa when we haven't yet applied for the graded visa or submitting the application is a prerequisite for signing a full-time contract? Can we make it better? Certainly. Here's an option. Question. Can I start a full-time job before applying for the graduate route visa? Point one. Course ends in September, confirmation in late October. Point two. Officially allowed to work full-time after course completion. Okay, you get the idea, but how do you figure out what points to use in your communication? A few frameworks will guide you. Well, frankly speaking, top-down communication doesn't really need frameworks. It's just one main idea supported by two, four secondary points. However, if you are just beginning and seeking a bit more direction, we've got you covered. So framework one, major plus supporting ideas, which consists of major idea, then supporting idea or proof number one, supporting idea or proof number two, and supporting idea or proof number three. Framework two, problem, solution, reasons, which consists of problem, solution, reason number one, reason number two, reason number three. Framework three, recommendation, rationale, next steps. Recommendation, supporting idea for that recommendation, number one, supporting idea number two, supporting idea number three, and risks or next steps. And framework four, question and context. Question, context or detail number one, context or detail number two, context or detail number three. At this point you might say, hey, I've seen lots of smart people neglecting this top-down rule. Do they do it on purpose? Most likely yes. Top-down communication has its limits, and we'll talk about it right now. Top-down communication excels when presenting analytical data, concrete facts, reasoned arguments, and action steps grounded in critical analysis. Think Daniel Kahneman's System 2, which is disciplined analytical reasoning. But what if you want to deal with emotions? When you need to cushion the blow of some tough news, set the stage with delicate context, or captivate and motivate the audience? In this case, storytelling works way better than top-down communication. Of course, you also need to be a good storyteller, but that's a topic for another discussion. Hence, the rule of thumb is this. Top-down communication works best when the audience is emotionally prepared and the context of the conversation is mutually understood. Top-down communication fails when the dialogue is emotionally charged or heavy, the scenario warrants a thorough contextual build-up, often while via storytelling, the aim is to resonate emotionally with the audience, or if the cultural norms of your listener lean towards more indirect communication. All right, now we are ready for some book recommendations. The go-to read on top-down communication is The Pyramid Principle by Barbara Minto. It's arguably the most renowned piece on the subject. Admittedly, I haven't read it. I believe the core idea doesn't warrant the entire book. What I did read and what I keep recommending to anyone who's asking is a book on writing well by William Zinsser. It's about writing and communicating concisely, and it's been a game changer for me. Have a look, it's worth it. That's it for today. Join our consulting community in Discord where you can find the latest insights about interview processes in different companies and offices, browse job posts from around the world and chat with cool folks about careers and life. Join now and see you soon. Cheers.